Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Is the only one who deserves the praise. You deserve to be lifted and we honor you. Hallelujah. 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 Honestly, God has been faithful to us. Such an awesome God, such an awesome God, such an awesome God. That's our testimony as a family of faith. Can you lift your hands and join me worship this King? Such an awesome God, such an awesome God, such an awesome God. Oh yes, we thank you, the miracle worker, the one who is changing and building people. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. You're such an awesome God, and we give you all the praise. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. I'll sing it one more time from the depths of your heart. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Father, we thank you. And tonight, Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. of the finger of God in our midst. And Lord, we take our time and give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the next two to three minutes, I just want us to express our gratitude to God. Everyone, just mention all the things the Bible says. Count your blessings. 
Lord, we give you thanks. Zibrando Jalakata. Thank you. Those he saved from accidents. Those who were killed for the miracles. Changing impossible situations. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We acknowledge you as the doer of these things. No man is worthy of praise. Not Joshua Selman. Not anyone else. There is one who is worthy of all the praise and we thank you. We praise the name of the Lord. and bless his name. Worship right here from your spirit. One more time, just the voices. Up. 
presence is all we have, oh God. Your presence is all we have. In you we make our boast all day long. Your presence is all that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. I thank you. I thank you for the gift of your presence. This is all that we have. This is all that we have. Your presence. We give you praise. We give you praise. Mighty one of Israel. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Sing it to the miracle walker. Sing it to the one who can change your life. Your name is God. One more time, lift your voice and sing. Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. Help us tonight, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, we depend on you. Help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Greet everyone around you. God bless you. You're welcome. we thank you faithful God hallelujah hallelujah is the mighty God hallelujah hallelujah 
Is the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah, you are good. You are kind. You are more than what we call it. Jehovah, you are good. Jehovah, you are good, you are kind, you are more than what people say. You are bigger than what we call you. You are greater than what we call you. You are higher than what we call you. You are better than what we call you. Jehovah, you are good, and you are kind, you are more than what people say. Jehovah, you are good, you are kind, you are more than what people say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pray tonight and ask the Lord to touch you. Pray that his word will change you, change us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Good to see everyone. God bless you. Praise God. I want to talk about something very, very important tonight. But first, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 71. We'll read this scripture and we'll arise. And I want you to pray your life out within the next five minutes. And then we will teach. Because in this season, God is determined that you must be great. And no power in existence will stop it. Psalm 71. Verse 21. Psalm 71. Whether you have a seat or not, I want you to just concentrate because the power of God will touch you. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. That's what will happen to you tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. I will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over my soul. Ready? Psalm 71, verse 21. One to read. One more time. One more time. Jump up on your feet and blast in tongues and say, Lord, this is your word. You are determined to increase my greatness. It says, thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. You will increase my greatness. You will increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Thou shall increase my greatness. This is your word for me. I receive it. You receive. You increase my greatness. 
financially you increase my greatness career wise go ahead and prophesy and say lord you are determined to increase my greatness it says thou shall increase my greatness thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about thou shall increase my greatness Oh, you will increase my greatness. I will be higher than I am now. Something will come upon me that will take me to the next season of my life. You will increase my greatness. Pray. Tonight, God is about to mark your life and open up the portals for a new season. He said, Thou shalt increase my greatness. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me. Lord, we receive your word as a house. You will increase our greatness. 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 Maka parata po shoto praise. Sete karia tabala da da da. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54. Sheka tata baka tabala da ba. Isaiah 52, 54. Isaiah 54. I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2, and then we'll read verse 3 together. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou who did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Read it as a prophecy to yourself. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Lift your voice and say, I am breaking limits. I am breaking forth. Come on, prophesy, Koinonia. I am breaking forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing limits me. Pray inside and outside. I'm breaking forth. This is the word of the Lord. I'm breaking forth. On the left, breaking forth. On the right. I'm breaking forth. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm breaking forth. We are breaking forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. Ah, before I teach tonight, I have come to prophesy. Mande brandi shalakata. Zike preti shabaladaba kanda preti shata. Honestly, I prophesy to you that this is the season that you will begin to break limits. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy, I prophesy upon every area of your life. It's time to move to the next level. It's time to move to the next level. Break barriers, break barriers, break barriers, ancestral barriers break limitations that came with your lineage i prophesy to you rise up this is your season for your head to be lifted up this is your season 
you will shine like the star. You will shine like the star. Rise up to your destiny. Answer the prophecy of your name. I prophesy to you. Arise, shine. Your light is come in this season. Arise, shake up the dust. Arise, stop crying. Shine is your season to shine. The Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. I prophesy, you are marked for shining. Arise and shine. Somebody is leaving his current level. Let me tell you, listen. I prophesy to you that the level you are now, there is a hand that will pick you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they saw Saul, they said, Is Saul also a prophet? What suddenly happened? A man who left as a houseboy returned back with an anointing. I pray in the name that is above all names. Those who have laughed at you, this is the season they will see the glory of God arise. Those who have mocked your God, I prophesy, this is the season you will arise. Those who have said it's impossible, may the hand of my God lift you from where you are to where you need to be. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. A man of great destiny was locked up in a pit. But the Bible says the king sent for him. Let me tell you, when the king sends for you, no power in existence has the ability to stop you. When the king if a messenger sends for you, it's alright. But when he said the king sent for Joseph, tonight my God is sending for you. It's time for your destiny to arise. The king is sending for you. The king is sending for you. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. Listen. Eleven times in my dream, the Lord kept telling me it's the season of breaking forth for God's people. Eleven times. Eleven times. I have never had such an experience. Eleven times the Lord kept speaking to me. That go and prophesy that is the season. That's why I came with that verse. You can choose to believe it. Because you see, when many people hear the word, they are just those who just stand. But there are others who say, Lord, this is it. This is my word. I take it. I receive it. It is my word. Ezekiel 47. I will just share this and we will pray. I want your spirit to be fired up tonight. Afterwards, he brought me again to the door of the house. And behold, what has issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. And the forefront of the house stood towards the east. And the waters came out from under. From the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward. And led me about the way outside into the outer gate by the way that looks eastward and behold there ran out waters from the right side now listen he says and when the man that had the line in his hands went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits that's a level and he brought me through the waters and they were to my ankles Again, everybody say again. Oh, the last lifting is not the last one. The Bible says again. The word of the Lord is coming again. For many of us, 
the last time it came was years ago. It says, arise, shine, not because there is light. The light has come to you. When the light comes to you, you must arise. Hallelujah. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters and the waters were to my knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to my loins. Afterwards, he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river I could not pass for the waters had risen, waters to swim and rivers I could not pass over. Oh, the Lord will take you higher. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will take you higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold hands with somebody and we are going to prophesy. Combine all these three scriptures together and shout it. Let the pit of hell know that is your season for lifting. Go ahead and prophesy. It's my season of lifting. It's my season of breaking forth. It's my season of life. It's my season of dominion. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Shake up, 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 up. Prophesy. Breaking forth in every area of your life. I'm breaking forth. Spiritually, I'm breaking forth. Financially, shake up, shake up, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's take one more scripture. Revelation chapter 3. Man take a babakata la bakata. Revelation chapter 3. From verse 8. It's projected. Are you ready? One to read. He says, I know your works. In other words, I've been watching you. Although things are not working, I watch the way you praise me through the pain. He said, I know your works. And as a result, behold, see, I have set before you an open door. He said, no man, no man, no government, no devil of darkness can stop it. Lift your voice and prophesy. The door is open for me. That prison door is open in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shake it, take it, take. Sister, receive it for your marriage. That door is open. Receive it for your finances. Receive it for your career. The door is open. The power that will stop you must bow tonight. Oh yes, you set before me an open door, an open door. Can we still pray through more scriptures? Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. I'll read verse 1 and 2. And then I want you to read verse 3 from the depths of your heart. Isaiah 45. Thus saith the Lord unto his anointed Joshua Selman, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings 
to open before him the two leaf gates. It says, and the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. You are ready to read your prophecy now. Verse 3. Shake it, baba baba. And bring the second neighbor baba baba. He said, and I will give you the hidden riches of secret places. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, I'm ready to receive. Your word says you will smash the gates. And you will give me the hidden riches of secret places. Come on, pray, Koinonia. The meeting is already on. Pray. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The last scripture, Isaiah 43. Hmm. Isaiah 43 from verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready? Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. How can a man make way in the sea? Hallelujah. Verse 17. Who bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. And they are extinct, they are quenched as a weak. Verse 18 is a prophecy to someone. He said, remember ye not the former things. Forget about the disappointment of yesterday. Forget about who said what. Forget about what did not work. Are you hearing me? Forget about the result of yesterday. Forget about what the doctor said. He said, remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Why? Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Oh yes, he will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. And streams in the desert. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I forget about the failures of yesterday. I forget about the failures of yesterday. In the name of Jesus. What the Lord will do will surpass what you expected him to do. Pray. I remember not the disappointment. I remember not the failure. Go ahead and prophesy. It's a new season. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Receive it as a prophecy. Hallelujah. May your ears hear it. May your eyes see it and may your hands handle it. I prophesy one more time. May your ears hear about it. May your eyes see the miracle. And may these hands that are lifted, may these hands handle it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, give God a shout of praise and be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Once in a while, God gives us prophetic words like this 
to shake off every unbelief. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One of our passions as a ministry, aside from helping people experience intimacy with the Holy Spirit, one of our passion is to help people understand the principles of the kingdom. Everybody say the principles of the kingdom. One of the greatest revelations in my life was the understanding that the kingdom of God is a system that is built on definite structures. For me, that was the ultimate confirmation that God is a just God. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons and he does not show favoritism. Whoever can walk this principle of the kingdom earns the right to walk in certain strange order of graces and blessings. And may that be your portion tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight I want to share with us something. When the Lord gave me the word, that is increasing and expanding our greatness. I knew at once that my job is to prepare us so that we do not miss out on the prophetic things that God is doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to share a very simple spiritual principle. And I will tell you why certain people rise and get to some levels and never rise beyond it. If you listen, if you, if you listen and understand what I will teach tonight, truly your path will be as a shining light. We have prayed, we have spoken the word. But now is the time to settle down and listen and know how to align with prophecy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecy that has been spoken to you. It's not enough that the word comes. We must know how to align with the word. Say amen. And tonight I want to teach on a very powerful spiritual principle. Write it down. Faithfulness 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 that spiritual formula that governs the rising of men from one level to the other faithfulness I want to show you a powerful formula part of the construction of the kingdom of God this principle was put there and if you know how to walk it then you will keep rising everybody say faithfulness the first point I want you to know tonight is that it is God's desire for us to experience ever increasing success and greatness in every area of our lives it is God's desire for everyone everyone under the sound of my voice and those connecting with us online it is God's desire for everyone to experience ever increasing success ever increasing greatness is God's desire for you to move from one level of glory to another it's important that you know that it is God's desire. There are people who do not believe that it is God's desire for them to experience the blessings of God. To rise from one level of kingdom influence to the other. Say it is the desire of God to see me increase. Hallelujah. But then this, these greater levels that we talk about doesn't just come just because of prayer or prophecy alone there are 
kingdom principles that we must abide by and if we do then we'll be able to step into these levels and one of them one of them is faithfulness hallelujah there are very few teachings about this faithfulness we teach on prayer we teach on many aspects of kingdom principles and they are good but i, I will show you the all surpassing excellency of faithfulness and how it is able to take a man from nothing and take you to the top hallelujah what is faithfulness right faithfulness means continuous unrelenting loyalty and commitment please write i want to be very simple so that every one of us will understand continuous unrelenting loyalty and commitment be it towards God be it towards men or be it towards a cause unrelenting continuous loyalty and commitment towards God towards men or towards a cause faithfulness Faithfulness is such a powerful kingdom principle that God himself called one of the names of God is faithful. He is not just, he doesn't just have faithfulness. He is faithful. That is the quality of God that makes him trustworthy. It is the faithfulness of God I remember preaching a message was it last year or year before last faith in the faithfulness of God hallelujah to be faithful means to be dependable it means to be loyal it means to be trustworthy please I want you to pay attention tonight This simple kingdom principle has been the reason why many people have failed to rise from their current level of grace or current level of blessings to the next. But tonight as light comes, you will arise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, the blessings of God upon a man's life always come in levels. Write it. You must understand this this is how the kingdom functions there's no other way no matter how anointed you are the blessings of god the anointing of god the grace of god comes upon a man's life in levels hallelujah the blessings of god come in levels listen just this this revelation enough this one i just told you is enough deliverance for many people who want to get blessed you know all this sharp sharp mentality right and the youth in nigeria have this mentality the average young man is in a hurry we want to be blessed we want to make money fast hallelujah a man starts a ministry now and in one year he wants to have 50,000 people he wants to have 30 branches let me tell you the truth if you understand the structure of God's kingdom and how he blesses men you will stop struggling in your life many of the things that people call satanic oppression is not satanic oppression is the consequence of the violation of God's order of lifting people hallelujah a man starts a ministry and all of a sudden he sends all kinds of young people to the 36 regions of this nation and say go and start the branch of the church the kingdom does not work that way in the parable of jesus he said the kingdom of god is like a seed have you read that before the kingdom of god always starts small and then it begins to rise and the factor the report card is faithfulness Hallelujah.
Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Very interesting parable that Jesus gave. Verse 14. Jesus is giving us a parable now. See, listen. The Bible is not a storybook. The Bible is the wisdom of God. And if you follow through, especially the teachings of Jesus, you will see the order and the operation of the kingdom. The way the kingdom was supposed to function. Verse 14. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is as that means likened to a man. All right? Traveling into a far country. And he called his servants. Three people, please. Three people, come. You are the servants. Just stand three people. Where's the third person? Just stand, face the congregation. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. And called his own servants. And delivered unto them goods. Look up. The Bible says they are his servants. That means he has been watching them. Is that true? Do you agree with me? For them to be his servant, it means they had a period of time when they were serving him. And while they served him, he kept watching. And on the strength of his judgment and his findings. Next verse. And unto one, he gave what? Five talents, right? Unto the second, he gave what? Two talents. And to the third, he gave what? What was the factor? It says, according to their several ability in other words their capacity to manage that resource are you following me now not according to their prayer request not according to the prayer point they dropped during miracle service according to their ability that had been proven with time and you will see at the end of the parable that the man did not make a mistake ready next verse then he left he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made five more talents so this guy went and brought back profit verse 17 likewise the other who received two he gained another two all right then the third one he says but he that received one went and dug the earth you sow seeds not talent what you sow in the earth is a seed. Are you getting my point? You don't sow talent in the earth. And he took that talent and sowed it in the earth. And hid the Lord's money. After a long time, aha, this is another principle. What is Jesus teaching us here? That every time God trusts you with whatever level of grace, he will come back. There will be accountability. Are you getting my point? There will be a defense. There will be a supervision. And the report card is what will determine whether you will rise to a new level or not. Please listen to me. And many of you, you will know the reason why. Although you are anointed, you've not backslidden. But you may never rise to another level until you pass the test of this current level. Hallelujah. So he came back to ask the servants. Verse 20. So he that had received five talents, he now came to the master, right? And brought five more. In other words, you gave me five. Master, I went and I faithfully used it. And this is the prophet. The one that had two. Okay, listen, listen, listen. It says... The Lord said unto him, please go back to verse 20. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Let's see what the master said, verse 21. And the Lord said unto him, well done, good and... Did he say good and hardworking servant? Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been what? Faithful. Are you seeing now? That's the quality. I gave you certain gifts. 
I gave you certain opportunities. I gave you certain anointings. I gave you certain graces. I connected you with certain people. He said, you have been faithful over a few things. What's the reward? He says, I will make you ruler over what? Many things. Did the guy pray for it? Did he fast for it? He just showed himself faithful. And the Lord said, I'm ready to take you. In other words, your faithfulness is your report card that you qualify to enter the next level. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. 22. He who had received two talents came and said, you did this and that and that. Verse 23. The Lord said unto him also, same word, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over what? This is Jesus' teaching. He's teaching us how the kingdom works. Let's see what happened to the third person. 24. And he which had received the one talent came. Look at the guy. This is the one talent guy now. Just, just watch carefully. He said, Lord, that's him talking now. After a long time of God entrusting him with an anointing. After a long time, God gave him five members. And gave him one year. And kept watching what he was doing with the five members. Are you getting my point? He kept grumbling. And comparing himself with other people and doing all kinds of things and here's his report Lord I knew that you are a hard man look look at this guy he's talking to the man who gave him the gift Lord I know you are a hard man reaping where you have not sown can you imagine what did they call the money he said it is the Lord's money but this guy is now saying you want me to be the one praying for the sick then i'll be giving you glory you are shining up there i'm here suffering and praying for people are you getting the point now he said it, it, it was see the bible says out of the abundance of the heart so this guy had been locked up in bitterness and anger waiting and say let, let this lord come we are going to flog out this issue once and for all he could not wait Number five finishes. Oh, number two. He said, thank God it's my turn. Lord, I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you do not sow. He says, and gathering where you have not strawed. 25. I was afraid. Instead of wasting my time to build an empire and for you to come and say it's your own, it made me afraid. I don't want to waste my time. Doing something I will not enjoy the glory directly. Are you getting what the guy is saying? I'm not ready to just work for you. And then at the end, I will now come to you and say, All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. That's what these guys did. Are you getting me? They came back and said, This is what you have done. But all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. This guy was angry. He said, this song is not for me, oh. Hallelujah. And he was telling God his own version of the song. What's the version? All the glory belongs to me. All the glory belongs to me, oh God. Talking to the Lord now. Stood and looked at him eyeball to eyeball. Are you getting my point now? He says, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, here it is. Collect your thing. Wicked man. I can't be walking and then you come back and then you want to take the glory. Take your talent. Ah. Let's listen to what the master called him. Verse 26. The Lord answered and said, Thou and thou wicked and lazy servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not sowed. What brought you into ministry? Since you knew that the glory belongs to me. Oh God, give me talent. Give me church. God gave you two members. Now you are complaining. Who pursued you? Who put a gun and said enter ministry? Hallelujah. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I would have received it with interest. Verse 28. Therefore, listen. This is what will happen to any man that is found unfaithful. He says, take 
therefore it's not only the devil that takes from people it's in your bible god can take away from unfaithful men and bless those who are faithful take therefore the talent from him and give it to him that has what in other words take from the one who is least faithful are you getting my point now and give it to the one who has proven to be more faithful listen all the three were servants all the three were emojis all the three were graduates right but over time the master kept studying their lives and he found out that this faithfulness this formula that qualifies men to the next level they had it in different degrees so you can graduate we all graduated from so 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 and so department and then after three years you will find out that the other person probably the one you've been laughing at are you getting my point when i heard khadija giving her testimony i just sat down and i said to myself oh god i can tell you in all sincerity and it's not because she's here while she was here she was faithful very faithful please sit down god bless you sis. hallelujah could this be what has been stopping you from entering the next level hallelujah and i'll make it very practical now so that you will understand i told you the blessings of god always come in levels no matter how anointed you are a lot of people have gotten into trouble for instance from all these these comings and all these these things that they do on internet you just go on internet and say you won 2.5 million dollars and you are foolishly smiling to yourself say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you see that you just go around dreaming you see people shouting at you you say it's only a matter of time i'm coming the reason is because we do not understand the way the kingdom is built when you know how god blesses and lifts people at once you will know what is not of god is someone hearing what i'm saying now hallelujah somebody walks up to you sorry about the light i'm sure they are working on it hallelujah this is a good way to preach no distraction no looking at ladies you hear the word undiluted thank you jesus let me use the opportunity and say what i have to say ah praise god sorry about the sound when god trusts you with small and you refuse to regard it and be faithful then you do not qualify to walk into the greater levels hallelujah I know there are many kingdom principles that can accelerate accelerate our blessings we have double portion we have sevenfold anointing huh we have the favor of God tapping into prophetic uh, uh, unction or fountain or whatever but let me tell you and listen I learned this in a very painful way look up please I want to talk to you never try to lift a man that God has not lifted you will be fighting God and you will be an enemy of God and he will curse you there are many of you you see certain people at the same position and you'll be like ah, uh -uh. oh God but this sister is faithful God you said you should have blessed her and God is saying leave me alone I'm the one who sees the heart of men listen if God does not lift anybody leave them there are you getting what I'm saying many people have entered into a lot of casualties because they want to help certain people you see a man of God and you say after two years your church is still five members Abba oh God boy you are anointed you are such a nice brother you greet every sister that comes and God is saying continue talking there I know why I kept five people 
Then you see another person who looks very scattered and suspicious. And God blesses the person. I say, God, this thing, I think we need to coordinate this. God is saying, who is the Lord? Is somebody learning something tonight? Say faithfulness. Say it again, faithfulness. The blessings of God always come in levels. That means whatever level God gives you, the greatest way to prepare for the next level is not to be crying and fasting and say, Oh God, when will it come? When will that anointing come? When will they start putting water for... Come, come and carry this my water and bring. Oh yeah, now. Bring this my water. Some of you, when you saw them putting the water, you were just looking and say, Ah! When will my turn come? It will never come till you stop thinking about it. Hallelujah. When you see the people serving it, you just laugh. And in your mind, you're already wishing, Oh Lord, give me a church. Give me a ministry. End this my inferiority complex, Oh Lord. And God is just watching you. He say, you think the kingdom is a place of joke. See that? That's what, that's what some of us, you know, ah, yeah, the things that people think about in the house of God. As a hot message like this is going on, there are many people looking at so many things, being distracted at so many things. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. You came into a church and they say, okay, join the workers. Say, join which kind of workers? I was Bible study secretary in my, my, my local assembly. I even led the choir. You are now giving me chair to clean. God they didn't send me a, that I would do that one. No. Give me something that is charismatic. Evangelism or prayer or something that will bring me out on the scene. Hallelujah. And then you will find out that you can be in that church with them. God trains you. At that season, he will build you. There is a season in your life where you can make mistakes and go scot free. God is building you. Are you getting my point? When you prove yourself to be faithful, one day God will come to you and say you have been faithful. You are always cleaning chairs. You are coming early. By 2 o'clock you come. Nobody knows you, but you are cleaning the chairs. And as you are cleaning the chairs, you are saying, oh Lord, I thank you. Those who will sit on these chairs will be blessed. Somebody may look at you and say, Sister, if it's husband you want, come for a miracle service. You know, that's how people talk. Once they see commitment in the house of God, they say, the way this sister is walking, I'm sure there's one brother that is eyeing her. Must it be so? Or when a brother is doing something, he says he's looking for pastor. The way this guy is doing, his pastor is looking for. Commit yourself to be faithful. I've shared my testimony. Was it in 94 or so? 94, 95. Hallelujah. There used to be a man, a church that started called Power Praise Chapel. The name of the man, I don't know if the church is still there or if the man is still there. Emmanuel Amechi Ani. I'll never forget his name. They started the church in a hotel not too far from our house. And they brought somebody that would teach me keyboard. He was part of those who brought somebody. So when the church started, they said I should come and play keyboard. When I came to the church, no choir, no nothing. I would trek from my house with my own money and my own keyboard and take it to the church. I've said it again. They never gave me anything. No thank you after service. The only thing they gave me once was Fanta and one cassette when the man did his lordship. One Fanta, bottle Fanta, and one cassette. And I accepted it with gratitude. In fact, it was my father started getting concerned because I would go to a local church, I would come back and then have to go and play keyboard for them and trek back home. But God is my witness. I never had cause to complain once. Listen, if you are working in a place and your leaders are not good and you find yourself talking you are sowing a seed you will reap it for sure hallelujah there are people who will never walk in a place faithfully their job is to observe what is wrong why is this lady always 
looking towards where apostle sits and what is her business why are you taking it personal what is your own problem Shebi, you came to bless god too have, be, have you been noticing what happens is you are not the only one who have been noticing this thing rather than getting blessed listen listen rather than getting blessed you are just sitting down that's how they keep doing everywhere and you will see god lifting them higher and you will remain there and you keep getting angry because every time god comes there is a report card your faithful service hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying a sister can be faithfully sweeping the house of god and say lord i'm not doing this because i want a husband but i'm committed i'm faithful i will serve you whether they laugh at me or not i will do it and one day she's sweeping that's when god will position one brother him is coming to pray god will say turn left say lord what are you saying say turn left it's time for you to change levels and the sister is just sweeping her thing i'm serving the god of miracles i know yes i know and the naysayers and the backbiters are there watching all of a sudden you will see somebody you saw rise up to a dimension you cannot even look at them again faithfulness hallelujah come to sin i'll never forget she used to be the one leading worship before we started koinonia remember somebody will come for those of you who were there Binga, they'll play the guitar and she'll come and lead worship I will never forget one day I lashed them. Can you remember? They I lashed you seriously. Very seriously. They were not serious with their work. And I came that night from, I came from the throne room with such an anointing. And when I came, you know, it's not my fault. Jesus entered the temple. When he saw what was going on in the temple, say, it's the zeal of the Lord. And that day I made sure that I told them before the meeting, they must pray for one hour. Pray in tongues for one hour. Clean out every flesh that can corrupt what people need to hear. God has honored her today. I'm saying this. When you see God lifting people, in spite of your criticism, keep quiet and find out what is being done that you are not doing. Bless you. Are you getting my point now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be faithful. God gave you an anointing. You can't heal any sick body, but he gave you grace to preach. You have refused to preach. You don't do any evangelism. Say, I'm tired of this evangelism that doesn't have power. How about, I, I, let, let me shine too. When I pray, let the person fall. How can I be frustrating myself? I'm talking, the guys agree with me. I'm quoting a scripture, he's responding back. Lay hands on the guy and let him wake up and know that there is a potential difference. That's what you want. And God is watching. God is saying, look at, this is the level of grace that I gave you. And this is what you are doing with it. Remain there until you learn the art of faithfulness that takes you to another level. That's why overtaking is allowed in the spirit. You can see a man will come and in one year he has entered some levels and you have been there for three years. You get the same job in the same office. Other people are eyeing the boss, shouting there and there. This boss likes women. The other one is saying, Lord, I thank you for the privilege. Although they are paying me 20,000, I know it cannot do anything. I thank you and I'll be faithful. The other one is saying, Weak, wicked boss. You give us 20,000, we are here walking. You are using a phone of 200,000. You are there grumbling and God is watching you. Hallelujah. Do you know God watches your works as you serve, as you are faithful? God gave you a little level. When I started out, I didn't start as anointed as this. It would have been witchcraft if I started like this. <laughs> line upon line. Faithfulness. I remember when we were very few. Those who were around. 
One day we went for evangelism in Jamaa Hospital. We went there and invaded the place. Just went to preach and share the love of Christ. You are not ready to start small. Some of you, the way you start is true that God has called you in the ministry. And you, you've seen the stadium. You've seen yourself packing wheelchairs. And you will never start small. You want to start from the stadium. One foolish boy brought a letter for me that they want to, the spirit of God led them to hold one crusade. What's the name of that place? Where they play golf on your way to huh? Polo Field. I said Polo Field. As if I don't know God, you better go and settle down and start small. They just came some boys. Said, God gave us an instruction. He said, I saw it the other night. The way they were boiling, as if they want to start praying. I said, calm down. Polo Field. God gave you a vision. Go to Polo Field. See, all this, if you know the kingdom and you understand the structure, not even visions will mislead you. Visions and revelations have made people to do stupid things. The word of God that reveals the structure of the kingdom is surer than any dream you will have and any prophetic word you will be given. God will never, let me tell you, take a man who is not faithful and put him in a high position. It does not work like that. Hallelujah. It doesn't work like that. Say, I receive grace to be faithful. Say it, I receive grace to be faithful. There are many of you, I'm telling you, you would have left the level that you are now if only you were faithful. You've not been faithful with the anointing God gave you. You started business. God gave you 50,000. You are complaining and grumbling out of the profit of the 50,000. You bought clothes. You bought phone. You are shining. And you say, I'm a kingdom financier. God said, no way. You can sing songs about million. You can draw dollars on your pillow. You will never be a kingdom millionaire. But God trusts you with 50,000. And you say, Lord, out of this that you have given, your kingdom, your kingdom. And God says, you did this for me. And then God will test you. And say, lay down that Isaac. And you say, Lord, it's painful. But let it go. God will say, you qualify. Step into the next level. Hallelujah. God made you a prayer coordinator. Of your small fellowship and you are faithful you are praying you are seven in the whole group but you are praying oh god bless these people may they find salvation they are walking in holiness they are walking in truth bless them bless their academics increase them there's nobody to tell you thank you nobody to tell you well done even when you know they are criticizing you when you know they are saying this Ogasa, this is your spirituality is too much you say lord bless them i still love them god says this looks like the kind of person i can bless are you hearing what i'm saying you are not faithful there are many people who will never be parents because they have not proven to be faithful children. You insult every elderly person around you, including your parents. And now you want a husband, you want a wife, with your bad attitude, so that you make your child become like what you are. God said, no way. We are rehabilitating the young people in the earth. You must change before I trust you. Are you, are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? It's a very serious message. Be faithful. Stop eyeing a high position somewhere. Be faithful. Be faithful. Hallelujah. Jesus started with a few disciples. And then there were so many people. Then there was a crowd. It didn't just start with a crowd. Financially. God wants you to be a multi-millionaire. And you just saw somebody, <laughs> one of my friends called me, very humorous person, and he called me. He said, Josh, in my presence, somebody bought a Jaguar, a new Jaguar, 18 million, tear rubber. Hi! I said, mm -mm, this is the devil here. 
this is not vision this is the devil this kind of lust you see that your own god gave you a golf you are embarrassed <laughs> especially when you see ladies he said come and push this golf out of here now i see this not your own this is what society has made us to become and god is watching you yes you have to open the door from outside but give thanks lord i give you thanks it's better than a bicycle i glorify you i'm not ashamed of it and you get up in the morning you are cleaning it when the tire is as if it's your child that is sick you go and fix it god is saying you have this guy is faithful whenever there is anything in the house of god you say well don't laugh at my golf it's available if he cannot carry people he can carry sound can you use it and god says look at what this guy is doing all of a sudden somebody will walk somewhere and say the lord led me aha to bless you with another car and he said lord it has not changed my faithfulness and you take care of it god gave you a car in three months it has packed up you don't wash it you don't take care of the tire the cars the plugs are everything is jacking you say keep jacking you must keep moving till it dies and you leave it there unfaithfulness unfaithfulness as little as clothes god gives you clothes you don't wash them you don't iron them and you say lord you better bless me all these prophecies that they are giving god is saying what does it cost for me to bless you but you have not proven that you are faithful i receive grace to be faithful that's what i i tell god all the time this work this little work that god has given I, I i take it that's why i take my job seriously every time you see me I, i'm in an attitude of seriousness not because there is any human being coming to supervise me i put a sense of urgency time to pray when i'm praying for you nobody disturbs me i shut up the place and i'm praying i say lord you have committed these people and it's my job to pray bless them even those who are not tightening let the tight of the house cover for them while they listen to the message you have not tightened for one year and the heavens are still opening over you let me tell you that this is these prayers that we are praying a day will come god will shift you out alone and then you say so this is how the heavens have been faithfulness God gave you the opportunity to play keyboard you don't rehearse you are not serious you are not improving yourself you are there angry with anybody who can see there are certain people because of our lack of faithfulness we never appreciate what gives what God gives us we always want more and we are always envious and angry at people rather than being faithful intimidated by people oh, we, oh god i want this i want this and many of us get into all kinds of things that's what has made many men of god to get into witchcraft the truth is the honor they want to get is going to come how many of you know that all of us here will be blessed we are going to be blessed the millions will come a day will come the things you admire now see I used to think I like food. It's a lie. I don't like food. Lack. Everybody say lack. There is a there is a way lack can hit you. It will create lust in you. Anything you see, it must finish before you rest. That's what was happening to me. Listen, the things you admire about people that make you unfaithful with God if you can be faithful you will walk in it all these cars you see an average young man under pressure people lie everywhere say I ask them where are they walking say i'm, I'm walking with one uh, uh construction what is the name i say it's a construction company i shuttle abuja and uh, zaria so what are you doing now i came to solicit for another job is it true it's a lie what is pursuing you impatience and lack of faithfulness whereas you are working in a cafe that's the construction company you are working in a cafe and you are embarrassed by it whereas you would have been faithful god has blessed me with a job don't say i'm managing you are not managing you are creating a report card that will bless you 
Hallelujah. I'm in a cafe now. How much do you earn? I earn 5,000. Say you. What kind of, why are you falling your hand like this? No problem. Say if it's 5,000, let me give you your salary for this month. And people intimidate you. No problem. He should carry his money and keep showing everything. You just be faithful. Sister, till now, you cannot afford a withdrawal of one five. No problem. No problem. I can plant. I'm using my natural hair, but I love God and I'm faithful. I won't follow any man because of money. My God will give it to me. One of the miracles God did in my life is that I never, this craving, this craving for material things that you see somebody and say, oh God, if you don't take me there, no. One day I went to buy suit. And somebody said, this is the fashion in town. I said, I don't know who are the day. I will buy what I want. Don't put any pressure on me. Who are the day? What fashion? Where? I buy what is good. I buy what I like. I pay for it. If I cannot pay for it, I go and wait patiently. Many of us, there are shops you cannot pass right now. You have eaten almost one quarter of everything there. Your money is not enough to buy it, but you must buy it. Every time you pass, I want black currant. How much? 600. How much do you have? 59. I say, just give me. Because we cannot be faithful at this level. Everybody say, I receive grace to be faithful. Refuse to be embarrassed at the level you are now. Serve God faithfully. Let men criticize you. Let men talk. Let them say you are looking for a name. Let them say you are looking for a husband or wife. No problem. Be faithful. The God who sees your faithfulness, when he begins to reward you, even you, you can't stop it. You have a ministry here. God has committed two people. Be faithful. Pray for the two people. Pray. Teach them truth. If you have 200 naira and they are hungry, sacrifice it. God is watching. That was what happened to David. Everybody say David. David. For a few sheep, brothers and sisters, David went to the wilderness. He risked his life to save a few sheep. The brothers had thrown him down. But God was watching him. And Eliab and all the happening guys. God was just watching them. When it was time for, for people to be blessed, Eliab came out, broad chested. God said, no way. These are not the kind of people. I'm not looking for warriors on the throne. I'm looking for faithful servants. You are in the worship team. They never gave you a song to back up. But that, I mean to, to lead. But when you stand here, huh? And you are faithful. You are singing from the depths of your heart. You don't just grumble and say, this coin on yourself, the way they do their things. Just a few people who are shining. Once you hear people complaining like that, the truth is, is they want themselves to be in that position. They will use a third party statement. They say, why is it that only a few decoration ladies are sitting in front? Once you hear people talk like that, they are not lawyers. They are not advocating for anybody. They are speaking for themselves. It's not like I'm speaking about myself. Or it's not me. I, I, who asked you? Say I receive grace to be faithful. God wants to increase us financially. But what have you done with the finances that God has given you? You keep wasting money around. Throwing money everywhere. Doing things that do not glorify God. And then you stand and believe that God is going to carry 1 billion or 10 million or 100 million and give to you. And then you see God bless someone else and you are like, ah, God. I receive grace to be faithful. Lord, I thank you. If it is to sweep, the psalmist said, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper a doorkeeper God is speaking to someone tonight I want to lift you up but you have not been found faithful you have not been found faithful the little anointing I gave you you have only been falling and rising you've not done anything with it
Hallelujah. There are ministries who will never experience the prosperity of God. Not because they are not tithing, but they are not faithful. They are not faithful at all. The members raise offering. The men of God misuse the money. They do anything they want to do with it. The man of God is celebrating a birthday party. And they, they waste so much amount. And the ministry is just starting. They don't have that kind of money. You see that? And we put pressure. We men of God put pressure on people. Make me the biggest cake. 30,000. Make me this. And this is the money of the house of God. You're using it and wasting it. And God says, no way. You can't rise beyond this level. But God commits resources to a house. And he's seen the way the, the finances of the Lord's house are being used. He's seen the faithfulness. He's seen accountability. God says you are ready to move higher. Who is God speaking to tonight? You've been unfaithful. God gave you one room. You never cleaned it for once. Everywhere in the room is leaking. Including under the house. You have never said, let me call somebody to smell. He says, is it my property? This BQ, is it my property? And you want God to honor you. You want God to bless you. Hallelujah. Your neighbor always picks you and brings you for koinonia. You've never said, let me contribute small foil. 2,000 naira. You had the car making all kinds of noise. You cannot be faithful. God will never, never. It doesn't work that way. Who is God speaking to tonight? Many of us will need to pray tonight and say, Lord, I repent. I've not been faithful. You want to rise higher. Uh -uh. You watch television and you see great people like David Oyedeko. And you see all of the crowds and all of the things. And there are men who sit down just wishing and they're dreaming. Wishing and they're dreaming. Say, let's calculate how much prophet's offering will come to this man now. See what you are thinking. Say, ah, a man with this crowd, the money. You carry that anger and come back to your small fellowship. And you see four people, four committed people. Didn't I tell you to bring five, five people? Why have, stand up. Why have you not brought five, five people? You must bring five, five people. Have you been faithful? The, the five people are not learning anything. For one year, they cannot tell you one kingdom principle. You've not made warriors out of them. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't grow. They are not knowing the Lord. They lack intelligence. And God is saying, this is the same thing you will do if I give you 100 people. There are many men of God who want crowd. They don't study they don't pray. You meet them all the time. They are snoring. Snoring, playing computer games, watching football. You think ministry is just an occupation. And God looks at your heart and says, no. I can send you to go and assist. I can send you to go and help. But I will never send you to lead my work. You are not faithful. You are vulnerable. He leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen there were times i would prophesy and speak over people nothing will happen maybe in a crowd like this there may just be one testimony and i said i will be faithful if I cannot pray for the sick, at least I can pray for the people. And I know God will hear my prayer. God saw my heart. Till today, till tomorrow, God knows that my desire for more anointing is never so that they will say Joshua Selman is a great man. People say all kinds of things, send all kinds of text messages, and I thank God. But God knows for the rest of my life, I remain a servant, serving the house of God. Forget about all of this little honor that comes. This is, if you want it, the welfare, the welfare can give you. When you see all the protocol standing, following me, ah. When Koinonia started, I used to climb bike, machine, during miracle service. 
There will be crowd inside and outside. You just see me coming on machine. She, ba, 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 ba. Bless your people, oh God. Change their story. Change their life. And it was never an embarrassment. It was the protocol department that decided. They said, Kai, please, honor to whom honor is due. This is over. Tomorrow now, somebody will see me coming down from a jeep that God has blessed me with. You will now be angry. Why are you angry? I climbed bike. I entered taxi. Some of you are embarrassed to enter bus after service to go. You say, no. Let them not know that I didn't come with my car. And you start explaining to everybody, my car was faulty. Who asked you? Enter the bus and go home. Enter the bus and go home. Everybody knows you are still rising. There is no revelation that will convince us you have gotten there. We are all young people rising. It's just that some are faster than others. What's the embarrassment about? Somebody comes to your room and it's only Gary you have. You are hiding until the leather falls out of your wardrobe and you embarrass yourself. Bring it out and say, this is what I have. God is faithful. The day you buy a recharge card, Lord, I thank you. I could afford a recharge card. The day you buy a fridge, see, don't be embarrassed. Let men see you at your level now so that they will see the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassion they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. of you are even ashamed to introduce your parents to other people because your mother sells a car and your father is a carpenter and you are a fine lady you don't want to fall your hand that is foolishness of the highest order the person who played the fatherly role of Jesus was a carpenter are you getting my point get this childishness out of your life there are some of you here the work that you do, you wash clothes for people. It's better than prostitution. It's better than stealing. Learn dignity in labor. Be faithful there. You're working and they're giving you 200 naira. It's small, but the 200 naira is with dignity. There are many of you. God gave you an idea. You and somebody put a small joint for a car and you laughed. You laughed at God like Sarah. He said, God, if you don't, if you cannot bless me, I can wait. There are some of us here. God told you, I will take you far, but start selling used clothes. You said, Ha! Ah, God, used clothes. I have never worn a, a these clothes that the one, uh, what they call it? Hallelujah. I only wear designers. Why will I now begin to sell used clothes? Oh Lord, you are falling my hands. And God will say, you never will qualify to rise to that level where you will be committed with the true riches of the kingdom. Some of you, are, you are not in any unit, not in your church, not in Koinonia. You don't serve, you don't do anything. Your job, and you've been coming here for a long time. Your job is to sit down, watch others, and complain about what is not done. Do you know that faithfulness, faithfulness is how God blesses people? Hallelujah. Someone can say, me, oh God, I put it as a self-imposed work. My, my covenant with you is that every time I will be cleaning the pulpit, I would lie us with decoration. Please give me the opportunity. My job is to be cleaning the pulpit of the house of God. 
Nobody needs to know you. See, take what I'm saying seriously. If you are interested in rising to the new level, there is a level of death that must happen to you. You must show God that you are not ashamed of your current level. Hallelujah. There are people in the house of God. Faithfulness. God gave you little blessings. And they say, let's kneel down in the presence of God. You now lay down one hand as if, as if you are asking your wife out to marry you. Kneel down before the presence of God and be serious. The one who has kept your life. All this nonsense people do in the house of God. I tell you, Papa Adeboye, till today, he travels around the world. What's that thing that they play? Tambourine, right? He carries his tambourine. Among the, the world's hundred most influential people, it has not changed him. He takes his tambourine. Whenever he goes to a place, no matter who you are, he will get down on his knees and start singing to the one who took him from where he was and brought him here. I choose to be faithful. I will never allow anything stop me from rising to the new level. That's why you can listen to a man. It's not like he has so much rema or he has so much, but he will just say, may God increase you and the door will open because of faithfulness. And some people will come on, on stage and shout as if they are forwarding a tape and nothing happens to anybody. This is the place of the anointing. You will find the anointing in the place of faithfulness. This morning, I was just worshiping and I said, Lord, will you bless your people? Worship was just playing early in the morning and I was crying. Tears were coming out. I said, Lord, there are people coming tonight with burdens. There are people coming, trusting God. A lady came in from just I'm sure she's around this lady took a step of faith nobody no place to stay she just came in she said I'm tired of what is happening in my life how could I come and stand on the stage and then begin to make all kinds of noise that's why we pray that's why I take this work that God has given because I know that before I was born God has been blessing people and if I'm not serious, he will get me out of the stage. And you see, let me tell you, Dr. Paul and Encher said, it is God who will use the calabash to fetch water so that he will disgrace the pot. When the pot thinks I'm the only one, God will use calabash with holes inside and still fetch water. Never find yourself thinking God cannot do without you. That is a big deception. Oh, God can do without Joshua Selman. God forbid, if I die today, ah yes, you will cry for one week. You say, why did he die? You go and listen to all my messages that I say I wouldn't die. He say, oh, he has died. After one week, case closed. You will fight yourselves looking for who to lead here. And by the time you finish the fight, something will... <laughs> ah! Thank you for this deliverance, oh Lord. I have no business in all of this nonsense. My desire is to serve you. My one desire is that you be praised is that you be praised i tell you that's that's my desire that you be praised and i will be faithful in doing this my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised You want the anointing be faithful you want greater levels be faithful where you are right now whatever department you are working be faithful stop complaining stop finding fault contribute your quota and God who sees what you are doing God gave us a word that is lifting us and that means he's calling on us to be faithful one of these days, God is going to be moving across this congregation, checking the report cards of men. Let me see your prayer life. Did you pray for the house? Where nobody saw you, were you worshiping in spirit and in truth? Hallelujah. I told him, Lord, whatever will change my faithfulness 
in service whatever will make me to stop seeking the blessings of your people and start looking to build an empire for myself so that you say this is Joshua Selman and all the great works he has done oh may it be far from me if there is any prayer you will pray for me don't pray that God should give me money don't, don't pray all those things they will come naturally pray and say Lord give him focus never to be distracted by all these things that cause great men to fall ministry you want this you want branches oh 26 branches the man of God now has a television ah ah my one desire is that you be praised is that you be praised is that you be praised God is talking because there are lots of young people rising with anointing and grace but you need a lot of guidance and grace otherwise you will just run with zeal without knowledge and you will crash land very badly stop mentoring the lives of wrong people who teach you that grace is grace of God is working in your life all of a sudden in two months your church grows to 50,000 people is witchcraft God doesn't build people that way are you getting what I'm saying hear a little God will trust you with little be faithful when you are faithful with the little he trusts you he will take you higher and then leave you at that realm then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you become arrogant then you remain in that level you add another arrogance you go down small then it reminds you that God can do without you then you repent and then you rise higher that's how people keep moving up and down as if they are playing computer game but once you maintain a life of humility that's how the, your path will be as a shining light men will just keep seeing you rising because God will say the way you love me bless you that's why sometimes I worship him in your presence so that you can see that you should never get in to get to any level where you become too big some of us what we need to repent of tonight is big manism when you come to the presence of God pack whoever and whatever you have I love I love I love your presence I love I love I love your truth. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your truth. If only headache is being healed now, be faithful. The day God gives you an opportunity, to pray for someone's head pray for the head don't go and try and just get up God didn't lead you you go and tell somebody in the name of Jesus you are seeing the person no legs you say legs grow you disgrace yourself and scatter what God has been trying to do God is trying to announce you slowly you now went and cancelled it because of pride or impatience right two dangers or two enemies of faithfulness very quickly and I'll round up number one is pride pride makes us not to be faithful at the level that we are in pride obadiah 1 verse 3 i saw a scripture that blew me i round up right now obadiah 1 verse 3 is god challenging someone tonight obadiah 1 verse 3 everybody read the pride of thy heart has deceived thee thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock whose habitation is high that saith in his heart who shall bring me down to the ground your pride has deceived you so that when 
God has given you grace for Saria. Pride has made you believe that you are supposed to be in a television ministry. Pride stops men from being faithful. There are many churches in all kinds of death now going to television ministry that they have no business going to. God has not anointed them to that level yet. See, if God does not send you, you can still move. But the question is, life will ask you who is sending you. Many of us, pride, pride, the humility to remain at the level that you are in. Where are you walking? Ah, uh, I shuttle between Zaria, Abuja, and Joss. What's wrong with saying, God is helping me? I've started. And I'm in Zaria. I'm doing something. God is faithful. Don't say I'm managing. Don't use that language. What you call managing is the prayer request of somebody else. We're managing with all these people while I'm working on another white collar job. It is in that place of managing you will meet your miracle that will take you to another level. So you refuse to be faithful because you think you are managing. How much are they paying me in this primary school? I'm teaching primary one to primary six. You are teaching them much. You are not faithful. Like David in the wilderness. If you are faithful, one day God can give you your own business empire. And you sit down and say, I once was a school teacher. Hallelujah. A young man met me one time. I looked at him. I said, how are you, sir? He said, fine. The way he was saying fine, as if he was going to push me. He was going to introduce himself. I'm so so person. I deal with oil and gas, specifically offshore. You know, I have the company, and I'm doing this and that and that. And uh, XYZ said I should meet you for XYZ, and all kinds of stories. And then I was just looking at him. And after he made all those noise, you see... If you are blessed, you are blessed. Even if you are blessed and you choose to wear slippers, you are still blessed. If you are not blessed, you are not blessed. Even if you choose to borrow a car, you are still, it's not your own. After making all of that noise and jargon, I was just looking at this brother. Why put yourself under pressure? If you see the kind of cards that he printed, war suit, pencil tie, oil and gas say so I receive grace to be faithful at the level that God has, has brought me to receive grace oh God Jordan please stand up come I know when oh God listen let me tell you something I'm sorry if I pry a bit into your private life how many of you know life way for many years, Jordan walked with them and served faithfully. Many years. While he was learning faithfully, God was looking. He never knew that one day he will have his own bookstore. Are you getting my point? But he was faithful. I will never forget when God blessed him. His, his shop was so small. It was like a console room. A few books here and there. But God is lifting him. The last time I spoke with him, he's already making negotiations to begin to bring books directly from outside the country. This is what faithfulness can bring. There are people who have been binding demons for years and nothing has happened because of their arrogance. Listen. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be faithful with what God has given me and at the level he has placed me. Say it again, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be faithful. The clothes you cannot afford now, be patient. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The hair you cannot buy now, be patient. Brothers, the shoe you cannot buy now, the dress you cannot buy now, be patient. That's the second reason why people, the second enemy of faithfulness, impatience. I always preach and I say impatience has cheated many people. Many of our parents are in debt of 
billions of naira today because they tried to build a house that their colleagues were building that your financial level has not reached foundation enough at 50 million he would have built an estate a comfortable estate in a place i must go to gra i must go to my tama i must build in lekki whereas god gave you wisdom one small place outside the town six million would have comfortably built a house that you would have been renting you've carried many families are suffering today because of the ego of our parents pride made them to go and enter a deal that their finance cannot take sold the car sold the house sold the property sold everything because of impatience everybody say i receive grace to be patient say it i receive grace to be patient especially those of you in business say i receive grace to be patient there's no hurry be patient a prophecy has already gone ahead that you will be blessed be patient be patient do you know what patience can do in your life the bible says follow them who through faith and patience you are in ministry be patient say i will be patient say it again i will be patient Stop getting up and your body is just shaking. I want to organize program. I want to organize program. Your body is just shaking. You don't have the money. I want to organize program. And in that program, I want to invite Benny Hinn. I want to invite Paul Enenche. I want to invite Papa D you. God is leading you and say, invite one brother in your fellowship that God is helping. Say, ah, which kind of brother? I want the one that the, the posters very funny things people do there are ministries that run themselves down trying to invite men of god that they do not have the financial capacity and the organizational capacity to host them they just want a name i brought abc i brought xyz now you go and bring a man from london matthew ashimolo in your small church of 100 people and now the whole bill and everything for bringing the man and hosting the man is five or ten million and you are there sweating praying prayers you should not have prayed you would have quietly gone to lagos or come down to zaria or anywhere and find brothers and sisters who god is helping say i receive grace to be patient rise gradually i believe in faith i am a man of faith but faith is not foolishness are you getting me you rise from faith to faith you rise from stage to stage there are some of us right now you are in level one some you are in level two some god has blessed you are in level five be patient in the ark of noah the cheetah the fastest animal entered there the snail also got there it's a matter of time wherever god has not taken me i don't want any man to take me there are times i have consciously refused certain levels of exposure because i know in my spirit that the season for that dimension of exposure has not come and although there is room to go by the time you go you will die that's why a man of god can leave one geography go to another place and start failing and you are wondering is this not the anointed man you used to know Hallelujah. I will go. I will go. Anywhere you lead me. I will go. Rise up on your feet. Two prayer points and we're out of this place. I don't just want to sound what God is saying. Just like I'm just making noise hallelujah all those who are worshiping with us for the first time i want you to come out i want to lay my hands on you the lord is leading me to do this all those worshiping with us for the first time i want you to just come out and stand here i want to lay my hands and prophesy upon your life please very quickly we're out of time everyone if this is your first time of coming just come and line up here Hallelujah.
I want to lay my hands and prophesy the blessing of the Lord upon you. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's got a fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he will give up on you. Say, say, Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for coming. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. We honor you. We celebrate you. Now listen. When I lay my hands on you, as soon as I lay my hands on you, I just want you to go out. There is a committee that will meet with you. Hallelujah. They will meet with you and just greet you warmly. Ideally, I'm just supposed to call you, pray, and just bless you. But the Lord is leading me to lay my hands on you. Hallelujah. I like you to be praying. And as I lay my hands on you, just a touch. I want you to believe God. Whatever it is that you came here trusting God for. I want you to believe. As I lay my hands on you, for many of you, doors will be opened supernaturally. I want you to desire it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone in the congregation, stretch your hands. I will be very fast, very fast. Just a touch. When I lay my hands on you, just follow the other people outside. Thank you, Father. Bless them, oh God. Bless them. I anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I, I anoint you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I anoint you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint you in the name of Jesus. I anoint you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint you. Receive the anointing. Receive breakthrough in every area of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive breakthrough. Let the hand of God be strong upon you. May the grace of God be at work in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit, every power of darkness that wants to destroy your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be free from any assault of darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I take authority over everything that is not of God in your life. Return with dramatic testimonies by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever is not working in your life, I command it to work now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the heavens are open towards you. The heavens are open over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the hand of the mighty God, the heavens are open towards you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, enjoy unlimited grace. Enjoy open doors by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus, may the hand of God come strong upon your life. May he anoint you mightily. In the name of Jesus, may the grace of God speak in your life. Rise from one level of grace to another. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. You are blessed by the power of the Almighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Oh God, take away pride and impatience from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Take away pride. Pride. Pride and impatience. Please pray it. Lord, take away pride. Pride that stops me from being faithful at the level you have placed me. I take away that pride by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray. Pray. I pray. I receive grace to stay at the level God has placed me. I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to man. Faithful in the house of God. Pray. I receive humility in the name of Jesus. I refuse a fake life. I remain faithful and God will honor me and bring me to a place of prominence. It won't be long because my faithfulness is my report card that will qualify me to experience greater levels of grace. Now pray against impatience. I receive patience in my life. Patience to move gradually. Patience 
to move one step at a time. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry to be rich. I'm not in a hurry to be influential. I take my time. I go through the school of the spirit. I remain properly trained, properly trained to be used by God. I am well equipped. I move from one level to the other. Hallelujah. 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 This prayer point is for those of us who have been faithful at the current level. If you truly know under God that you have been faithful doing what you are doing in your business, in your academics, in your marriage, in your life, in the house of God, towards God, don't try to pray for eight hours every day. Start with 30 minutes or one hour. Be faithful. Don't bring all those religious expectations that make you feel you are getting spiritual. You pray eight hours today. The next time you pray again is after four months. When you have one terrible nightmare, you are cheating yourself. You, if you pray 15 minutes in tongues every day faithfully for three months, you will grow better than somebody who prays 10 hours today never to visit the throne room again. It's about consistency and faithfulness. Then grace is poured upon you and you can now move higher. Don't try to read 100 chapters of the Bible. For now, you can buy devotionals. Buy a devotional and use. You do not yet have the level of spiritual intelligence for some of you where you can navigate the world on your own. Be humble. Use the devotional. Let it help you. When you become grown in the world, you can now begin to explore. You are not using the devotional and you are not praying. Hallelujah. For those of you who have been faithful, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I connect to the anointing for the next level. Lift your voice and pray. If you truly know that you have been faithful, lift your voice and pray. I receive grace, oh God. According to your word, higher dimensions of prosperity, higher dimensions of the anointing, higher dimensions of influence. Pray for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I make the altar call, let me advise you. If you are not committed anywhere in the house of God, whether in your church, or in koinonia here or in your fellowships or you are cheating yourself there are certain levels of service or certain levels of lifting that only service can bring you can enter your marital destiny cheaply through service in the house of god you can enter certain levels of the anointing cheaply you can enter a level of financial prowess Sometimes I teach the leaders, most times I teach the leaders on finances. And these are things that they receive free because they are faithful, working in the house of God. During the retreat, the workers retreat, we have the opportunity to lay hands on all the workers. There are benefits and spiritual privileges. You will never compare yourself with someone who is faithfully serving in the house of God. When you get this key, my brother, you will run as if Satan does not exist. I promise you. I promise you. This, you can jump around for deliverance. You can hop from everywhere. But the body without a spirit is dead. So your boss in the office knows this. And there is a spirit that backs his chair. You just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do experience 
rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder. How many people, listen, I have given up on trying to do things by my strength because I know I'm wasting my time. The body. In the same way, the next time somebody stands and threatens you, that is a body without a spirit. See, no matter what talk people talk, I only consider you if you are connected spiritually. Are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? Circumcision is that key. There are many who continue. Ah, we have a an extent. We are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week, Friday. I'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man. You will get up and jump and shout. Tonight, all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery, crying and asking heaven and say, Lord. Behold the sick people. And already in this place, there are more angels. The arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know. That's always what happens. Whenever you see me come to sit down, I smile around the stage. I would have died of hypertension if I'm responsible for your healing. But we have made arrangement already. We are covered. Oh yes, absolutely. We are covered. Heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because God's designated portion listen when you steal your tithe you have not only destroyed your destiny you have stolen from your children every time you don't tithe just know that your firstborn is in trouble if you don't do it again you are affecting your children because he said I will pour you a blessing you will not have room in other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. It's the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000, and you carry one million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000 you are operating under a closed heaven don't convince yourself that because you gave one million the heavens is open it is called due process I'll teach you next week there is a protocol to spiritual things are you getting my point tithing is what opens your heavens and then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper if you like carry one billion Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tighter, I guarantee you, the Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation, fresh air, the wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron, Many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged them. That's why he said he is the head of principalities. It destroys men's lives on legal basis. This earth is too wicked for you to allow chance. No. I pray for people all the time. People with cancers, HIV, tuberculosis, communicable diseases. Imagine 
if I refuse to be faithful, I would die like a chicken because most times I lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here. They know that some of these things are physically not healthy. But I'm circumcised. My goodness. You invoke my name in a shrine, both the invoker, the invokee, and the ordinance, it, they will burn to ashes. Ashes! No matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, you are 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 mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in my life. 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 You are mighty. You are mighty in my life. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. They that are with us are greater. Greater, greater, mantos kalabandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I've allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside. Lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. Hallelujah. Listen. I give you an assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this. If you take what I've shared tonight, for many of you, this is your secret. It's your password to a mysterious level of lifting. A level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators. God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute. We are going to pray. In the next five minutes, listen. I want you to confront the gates of your destiny. And I want you to pray and say you must open up this night. Lift your voice. It's the seventh month. The gates of my destiny must open up. Power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, must open up. Some just chariots. Some in horses. But we trust the name of our God. one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go. But tonight, I want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say, I must go tonight. Lift your voice. Inside and outside. Cry. Cry. 
I must walk away that terminal disease must die today that cancer must die today that HIV must go today that barrenness must go today that stagnation must go today Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family, if they are here, the family that came with the poison person, are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast make sure you don't keep silent Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit. 
and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the spirit lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of god hallelujah hallelujah now i'm going to begin to minister to us and while i prayed for this in the course of the week again and again i kept seeing please pay attention can i have space please space please hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people. This is what I kept seeing. Like a man sitting on a man's shoulder. I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another. Bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands, everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone... Um, suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of David it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic. It's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now. There will be mighty deliverances. Mighty deliverances. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for us. And then at the count of three, we are going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I sense the anointing of the Spirit. Help me. The power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit. Some of you are already feeling uncomfortable. It's the power of God, especially many outside. There will be mighty deliverances. Lift your hands now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of your son, I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the Spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch I pray that by this shout oh God there be a visitation that by this shout oh God everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. 
I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh, yes. That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. Of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you must let them go. You must let them go. Right now, by fire. Para todos todos, preguntes cada, la cada cada, el proyecto de Dios. Para todos, aleluya. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies, ladies. A man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you. Right now, by fire, oh God, locate them. Right now, right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Ladies, ladies, a miracle is coming to sister. I cast those spirits. I cast those spirits. Outside, the fire is falling on ladies. I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I hear my spirit families. Families. God is stepping into families. There are altars. There are altars over families that are about to be broken. As you are standing right now, God is going to be visiting your family. At that shout again, inside and outside, make sure you are participating. Inside and outside. 
We are going to shout that name. As you shout the name of Jesus, families, so I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as we shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your voice and ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages, whether single or married. Right now, lift your hands. As I begin to speak, the wind, I see like a wind, a whirlwind moving across this auditorium. Oh. It will catch up with some people right now. Where are they, oh God? Visit them right now. In the name of Jesus. One more time, we will shout that name. Wherever they are. One, two, three. Jesus! Hallelujah. 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 I'm hearing a name, Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that 
We don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? No, I'm not saying, She's where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. We have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's sir. even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, Why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her. Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You? Your name is Dogara. Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never, if they are vomiting anything, please and please, maybe carry them out of here. We're, we're about to pray, please, don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with his courage. Why did you sit back? Now come. There's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Okay. Huh? Yes, it's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay. You understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. 
said I'm free Lord you showed me a baby boy confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit why are they here Dorcas your name is Dorcas too your name is Dorcas too your daughter's name just now I'll pray for all of you you are Israel I'm going to pray for you are you a student we have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics attacking your academics very seriously so that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel's. And I'll pray with you. Come. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman, but in the realm of the spirit, all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the ocean? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I'm doing. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now. In the name that is above all names. There is no hiding place. The light of God is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You must release this woman. It's a spirit of death. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There is liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There is liberty. Hallelujah. Now all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want, to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them now. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, live your life. Restoration of virtue, of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You. This lady looking at me. You. Come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is, that's, that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and let's release miracle jobs. 
If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we're playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical. Yet in the realm of the spirit, you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. By the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. Anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you I compel them to call your loved ones. I compel them to favor you. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone here called Agnes? Agnes. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. The Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes. We'll begin to pray for the sick shortly. Agnes. I'm hearing the name Agnes. God is ministering to me. He wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes. Do we have anyone there? Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name too. A family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you, and it looks, it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife 
Are you seeing that? Is, is, if it can look at one, two, three, four, five people holding one person, imagine what it will do to someone's destiny. I say this without a sense of cynicism. Many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week. Look, we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God. Because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent baby. God have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and you let them come up. I'm just going to speak to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you, who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I've seen something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to feel as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only, I prayed when I woke up. You prayed dream. when you woke up. It was a dream. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once. But truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in this previous day. For me to stand or to walk, almost two years. It's took me from Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand here, it's a problem. You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me. Yes. Is it that it's shorter than another? Or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's a, it's you did it? Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. Through it, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came through out. the other thigh. This is thigh. the person I'm talking about. And it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to his present. Where is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him. Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cause this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pain. Since I, yes, since I've been sick, they used to swell up. Since, you, 
since I was sick for six months, but he used to swell up. But now I can't walk on my body and be feeling sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? Five years. Where is which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two, two months. Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis. Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yes. swollen. Something beats me last oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen. Permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is the leg, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing his spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus. You can't remain in her. The swollen leg, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name, I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, I want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. 
It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities. We are going to do this very, very fast. All of you who are sitting, make sure you are connected and um, you are participating. While we are ministering to the seat, I want you to pass your prayer request. Ushers, you can walk around. Please make sure all those outside, even those on the roadside, make sure that we receive their prayer request because I'll be laying hands on it immediately afterwards. Myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you. Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. What is wrong with you? Just a laying on of hands. The anointing of the spirit is like a drug. The moment it enters your body, it begins to work and it brings you healing. You will notice that some people are standing for healing, but as soon as hands are laid on them, devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities. Just like that. Let's pray and watch what God will do. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Can we hear you? Father, for a miracle. You've never
never, it will not work. By your own, you will fall. Are your legs strong enough? Lord Jesus. Is this not why you died? I do not help you. You came here believing you. You have made this place a place of healing and miracles. Look at the condition of this brother. The legs. Look at him. Leave him. Remove your hand from him. Look at him. Have you tried walking before? Try it. Lift it. Lift the other one. Lift it. Lift it. You are mighty. Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come. come on, you celebrate Jesus. You are mighty Jesus. on Jesus. your throne. If you are here to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. No other name. outside can we have it quickly no hallelujah we just have five minutes to do this listen i assure you this is the place where god answers prayers hallelujah i may not be able to minister to everyone individually but i want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire this is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Turn impossible situations into testimonies. 
Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree. In the name of Jesus, turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. as my father I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened my father I pray for healings Lord healings or terminal cases Lord let it be turned Lord where people said there's no way my father we pray that doors Lord you create streams in wilderness places my father Lord for people that cast away my father Lord you make them renowned by the power of your spirit we ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord. Prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, people that are insane, you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus. We pray for contracts that long delayed. Lord, we pray that, Lord, they will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a shield of protection over your saints, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit. Let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus. Let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us, Lord. We give you praise, blessed Father, for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by the anointing. It's not by English. Burdens are destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. This last segment, you've heard me say it again. This is the most powerful and most impactful segment. If you're not a man of the spirit, you may not understand what I'm saying. Please help them. This is the most powerful of this segment right now. Before we go into this where I begin to prophesy, there are two dimensions to prophecy. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. That dimension of prophecy gives you direction. But the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. That's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word. Never joke with the power of prophecy. That's the power that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Before we do that very quickly, everyone inside and outside, there are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, 
I want to commit my life to the Lord. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the signs and wonders, but my way is not right with the Lord. You know that right now, as you're standing here, if the trumpet sounds, you're not making heaven. You know it right now. Having a Christian name is not the same as having a relationship with Jesus. There are some you've given your heart to the Lord at one time. Please help the, uh, those under the anointing. I tell you, there will be a powerful impartation right now. I sense a heavy anointing on me already. That's why I'm doing this very quickly. Now, if you are here, please don't delay us. You are saying, I want to return home. For whatever reason, you found yourself living the ways of God. And you are saying, Lord, I have heard your word and I'm not ashamed to make Jesus my Lord. There are people in this auditorium, young and old. There are people by all the overflows, right to the roadside. No matter how far you are hearing my voice, it should not be too far. Right now, I'll just count one to five. Please run like you are running away from death. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One, inside and outside. The devil is a liar tonight. Don't let any spirit stop you. Tori. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So deep with Yeah, when you hear the voice of the Lord. I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things it go and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. I am born again. I'm a child of God. From today, the power of sin, the power of the flesh is broken over me. My past is gone and it's over forever. I am a new creation in Christ. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus 
every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus. I declare that is a new season for you. Everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life, I release you from it right now. Every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble, by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away. I set you free. I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision. This is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, so that you will catch up with us in this prophetic session, I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands. They will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely. Praise the Lord. Just follow them. Koinonia, celebrate them as they go. All of you this way. This way, just follow the gentlemen. Now, everybody rise, please. I want you to receive this prophetic word. This is the seventh month, and the Bible says, Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Hallelujah. There is a mystery with the seventh month. It's the time where God perfects all things. As I prophesy to you, please, I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Don't, don't mind all that nonsense. One way to conquer Satan is to ignore him. All of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses. By the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things, you will waste your time. I know you are trying as ushers, just stand around. Satan does not have authority. I want you to know that there is an anointing. Manifestations are already signs that his power is broken. But Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh. So he begins to act around your mind to distract you. When you ignore Satan, is one way of conquering him. It does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense. Are you getting my point? So this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. I prophesied as I was commanded. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the ministry of angels, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister today that be the heirs of salvation? I pray for you. Every weakness in your life, Shabbatalakata, that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus. Every weakness in your life. That weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen, as I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head. It's an impartation of knowledge. Right now, oh God, I release an anointing to change the story of students. At the count of three, let it fall right now. One, two, three, take it, take it, take it, take it now, take it now. That anointing, receive it for exploits, shakatatata, inside and outside. 
take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor 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 everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see Lord of spiritual vision I pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as I'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the Holy Ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Hallelujah. There are many of us here. Dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction. But for many of us, our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there. The Bible says they will dream dreams. It says they will see visions. Shakataba, lift your hands. There will be an, a restoration anointing right now. I just want you to shout, I receive. Listen, many things will happen to you. Many of you is an activation 
of the realm of dreams and visions where God will start showing you the blueprint for the next level. Right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three as you shout, I receive. Let there be an impartation upon your dream life, upon spiritual visions. One, two, three. Now you receive it. Receive it. Restoration of fire. Fire. Dream dreams. See visions. Dream dreams. See visions. Dream dreams. See visions. Dream dreams. Hallelujah. He says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil I want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it is one thing to be gifted is one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed Thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow. I prophesy to you, whatever has covered your gift, whatever has made your gift barren, right now, in the name of Jesus, I anoint your gift now. I anoint your skill now. I anoint your gift now. I anoint creativity creativity I release it I release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of Jesus Christ anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you. Hallelujah. Everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year, you have tried by your strength. I'm releasing grace upon your life right now. Go back to that same thing and watch how God will bless you through it. I pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here I strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine Lift your hands. One last prayer. Listen. I want to activate the gift of the Spirit. Without the gift of the Spirit upon your life, your life will be barren and unfruitful. It says, For I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established. I pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three 
Take it, take it. Gift of healing. Word of knowledge. Gift of prophecy. 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 I activate the prophetic. I open your eyes. Spiritual gifts. Endowments of the spirit. I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you are supernatural. Let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow. I prophesy to you, every anointing that is upon this house from today, let it follow you like a shadow. Whatever the anointing has brought to this house, let it bring into your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him praise. Father, we give you all the praise. I assure you, you will know that this miracle service was unusual. You will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls i mean connections mysterious happenings i speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of jesus i command that every gate that has been closed the bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you i command the earth to work for you i command the wind to work for you I command the stars to work for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done for us as a house? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.